good day ladies and gentlemen welcome back to my channel it is february 16th 2019 and today i'm gonna talk to you about the no hide laws the no hide laws is gonna be the arse and of three major religions that are gonna make up the one world religion that is coming upon this world ladies and gentlemen your one world religion is going to comprise of three major religions the first one being moderate Islam and your five basic laws. Your second religion is going to be status quo rabbinical Judaism. Your third religion is going to be complacent Christianity orchestrated by Roman Catholicism. These are going to be your three major religions that are going to make up the one world religious body that is going to be orchestrated by a 70-membered Sanhedrin who's going to replace the UN, in a nutshell. So you're probably asking yourself now, where does the no-hide laws fit in with all of this? Well, if you're unacceptive of any of these three major religions that make up the one world religious body, you can either take the no-hide laws or you can take the guillotine. That's what we're facing, ladies and gentlemen. Physical gathering for all nations to give thanksgiving to the Creator to share with all mankind the gratitude for his mercies that fill creation all of humanity needs to prepare for the day that the Lord will reign in Zion when they too will make pilgrimages to Jerusalem to take part in the temple service the sages teach us that the world stands on three things on Torah on the temple service and on the act of loving kindness. Lacking the temple service, the world is like a throne that stands on two legs. We are very close to the time about which the prophets of Israel prophesied that God of the world, who creates everything, will call by the world the name of the God of Israel, for only the people of Israel remained attached to him. I mean, are you listening to this very carefully? The word the Lord. You know what the word the Lord means. The sages aren't telling you that they're also anticipating that this is going to hinge also on the Talmud, the Mishnah, and Kabbalah. So when they pose this article, they're very conveniently leaving out the, the meat and potatoes that mean the most. So I'm just filling you in on that before we go any further because the next line says humanity created religions such as Christianity and Islam that served as instruments throughout history to bring humanity closer to this great day when everyone would recognize the God of the world that was revealed on Mount Sinai in a desert that belongs to no people. It should be emphasized that the Ten Commandments that were given at that time belonged to all the nations. They were heard all over the world in 70 languages so that every nation would hear these things in their own language, the echo of things. 
that this is a witness by the reality that it is the only book in the world printed in every language that has a printed book and was hinted at the prophet Zephaniah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't figured this out by now, all of this is all polytheism. And the Christianity that's being mentioned here, yeah, Roman Catholicism is a man-made religion. Moderate Islam is a man-made religion. But then again, so is Rabbinical Judaism, so is the Talmud, so is the Mishnah, and so is Kabbalah. And this next line takes the cake, trying to sell off a monotheistic Yahuwah as a polytheistic Babylonian deity. For then I will make the people pure of speech so that they will all invoke Hashem by name and serve him with one accord. Zephaniah 3.9. Let's look and see what it really says. For then I will turn to the people of pure language that they may call upon the name of Yahuwah, in the name of Yahuwah, to serve him with one consent. They've taken his very name out of there and they're trying to sell you a polytheism and Babylon. At that time, we will all serve the one creator. Yeah, the polytheistic Babylonian deity, one creator, and fulfill the moral obligations incumbent on all mankind. This was the case since the beginning of creation when he charged Adam with these obligations. And once again, he charged those who left the ark after the flood and Noah with his sons and again at Mount Sinai, giving to humanity seven iron-clad rules. Now, be very careful, ladies and gentlemen. These are Talmud rules. These are not Torah rules. They're trying to sell you something that's a complete, utter false lie. These are the seven messages of the creator of the world to humanity known as the seven Noahide laws. Belief in God, blessing Hashem, stealing, laws, killing, have mercy on creatures, prohibition of prostitution. The Torah deals with all of these situations, ladies and gentlemen. But here's the thing. Rabbinical Judaism, moderate Islam, and complacent Christianity are all in denial of his name. Yeshua, Yehua, Yehusha, Yehushua. They're in denial of these names and they will not let you say these names. Therefore, anyone who receives upon himself all of these seven rules in front of a rabbinical court has a special status in Judaism. Even though they are not Jewish, they have entered into a full partnership in the service of the Gimel Dalit. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to read you next is just going to make you sick. We see God's hand clearly in the miracle of the Jewish state that arose again 2,000 years after its destruction, it is incumbent upon all those who accompany us to try as much as possible to spread the belief according to the prophets, just as the Jews guarded and observed their words, and to prevent, God forbid, the spreading of man-made religions, those who do so much also aid the Jews in observing what God commanded them, God required of the Jews an additional amount, more than he required from the other nations, since the Jews will serve as the priests of the mankind, and the other nations should not, God forbid, to try and influence people to join their religions. Just to make this clear, ladies and gentlemen, the organization that the Sanhedrin is sleeping with are guilty of murdering the prophets. Oh, you haven't heard nothing yet, ladies and gentlemen. Rabbi Dov Stein, secretary of the Sanhedrin, described the desire need to replace the United Nations. We now live in an era where the threat threats are global and not limited to one country, Rabbi Stein told Breaking Israel News. This is true of weapons, environmental issues, and even social issues. The solution must come from a universal effort. The United Nations has failed in its mandate by rejecting God as the creator and the Noahide laws common to all of mankind. Netanyahu promises Talmud will be Israeli law, published September 5th, 2014. Netanyahu tells Likud Haradai leader, Hebrew calendar will be official calendar of the state. 
a new basic law, Jewish law basis of legal system. Remember I was telling you that the new year that's in Tishri isn't the biblical new year? Those who are following the Tishri new year are actually following the Talmud? Well, here's, here's the article. You were warned. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be one of those do as I say, but don't do as I do situations. Lag Bo Omer is a Jewish holiday celebrated on the 33rd day of the counting of the Omer, which occurs on the 18th day of the Hebrew month of Yar. Yep, so while these 70 members of the Sanhedrin are going to be preaching to the world to be all goody-goody two-shoes, meanwhile, they're going to be in the back room engaging in strange fire. But what they don't know is that they celebrate Lagba Omer on the day after of the anniversary of Noah's flood, which is in the 17th day of the second month, which is always in Yar. To them, the anniversary of Noah's flood is in the fall. They have no idea that this is coming. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to digress on that too much, but you can see if this goes the way that it looks like it's going, our world is heading into some real serious trouble. Especially if the, the, that very same group of people are going to be dictating law and order in our world oh my goodness so what can we expect from this ladies and gentlemen well you can probably expect the church police to show up at your door and check your credentials if you're not a confirmed muslim a confirmed jew or a confirmed catholic you're going to be forced to take the no hide laws or take the guillotine once again it's either kiss the ring or get fed to the lions oh and we have the instigators of the law but now we got to show you the police the church police who's gonna be the church police guess who rome the ironclads of rome are already gathering this they've already visited the emirates the arabs are already on board with this rabbinical judaism is already on board with this roman catholicism is already on board with this to this end, by mutual cooperation, the Catholic Church and Al Azar announce and pledge to convey this document to the authorities, influential leaders, persons of religion all over the world, appropriate re regional and international organizations, organizations within civil society, religious institutions, and leading thinkers. They further pledge to make known the principles contained in this declaration at all regional and international levels while requesting that these principles be translated into policies, decisions, legislative texts, course of studies, and material to be circulated. Which means they're going to make it legal soon. And read this. This declaration may constitute an invitation to reconciliation and fraternity amongst all believers indeed among believers and non-believers and among all people of goodwill which means the catholic church is trying to reconcile 41,000 other christian denominations to themselves not only that this document gives freedom for muslims to join the catholic church without conversion to christianity which means you're gonna have to coexist in a Roman Catholic Church with Muslims even though you're a Christian believer one of the key words here ladies and gentlemen is universal or universalism that's one of the things that the Roman Catholicism is trying to bring in is this universalism the same way that the Sanhedrin is trying to bring in this universalism this polytheism so not only can you expect the church police to show up at your residence to check your credentials also confiscate any unauthorized religious paraphernalia uh, that would include your bible all your scriptural material any programs that you have on your computer will be wiped off uh, you know things like that the sanhedrin believes that the bibles that people possess all over the world shouldn't be in the hands of the people all over the world uh, they believe that it is their historical document and their religious document and they think it belongs only to them and they're going to try and come and take it away from you. 
In other words, they think you're too stupid to have your own Bible. Consider this also, ladies and gentlemen, because I've also preached this as well. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. The woman is Israel who's living in sin. Clothed with the sun, that is Edom. And Edom is synonymous with Rome. And the moon under her feet, that is Islam in submission of the woman who's Israel living in sin. But clothed with the sun, being clothed, this is political, economic, financial, and religious favoritism galore on a worldwide scale. How much more religious favoritism do you think that the Sanhedrin can get if Rome is willing to dissolve the UN and hand all that power over to a 70-membered Sanhedrin? How much more religious favoritism do you think they need? They're also getting hordes of financial favoritism. This is, this is Revelation 12.1. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the very same Franken-beast system that we see in Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not saved, you need to get saved now. Repent, repent, repent. Turn from your sins. Run to the arms of Yeshua, to the blood of the Lamb. Get saved. Time is growing short. The words of Yeshua's prophets are ringing loud and clear. I'm going to leave these articles with you, ladies and gentlemen, so you can reread them. I thank you so much for watching this video. Blessings to you all in Yeshua's name, and until we meet again.